the $11? What? Every other time I go here, it's like $5. Uh, we do the price by weight, so you're That's helping. ridiculous. No, I'm I'm not paying for that. That is you're ridiculous. To to. No, that is ridiculous. Can you come back, please? And what was the customer wearing? What was the logo on the employee's shirt? How much did the customer report that her yogurt cost in the past? If you had a hard time remembering the answers to any of these questions, you actually fall into the majority of people. My name is Danielle Romberger, and I am here to give a mini lecture about eyewitness misidentification. DNA evidence has been used to overturn 329 convictions since 1989, and 75% of those wrongful convictions were decided largely on the basis of eyewitness testimony. One strong example of a wrongful conviction based on misidentification of an eyewitness is the sexual assault case of Ronald Cotton. It is theorized that the victim was in such a high level of stress, the event was not fully encoded into her memory. Levels of anxiety and levels of trauma witnesses go through strongly impacts the validity of their statements. The yerkes dodson law is an empirical relationship between arousal and performance, originally developed by psychologists Robert M. Yerkes and John Dillingham Dodson in 1908. The law dictates that performance increases with physiological or mental arousal, but only up to a point. After the break in the curve, the level of anxiety will impair performance, which is often the case in eyewitness misidentification. Yerkes Dodson Law can be proven in an experiment done by Elizabeth Loftus. Participants had their gaze monitored during a crime. One group saw a crime where a gun was involved, and the other group saw a crime where there was no weapon. Those who saw the crime involving the gun remembered less about the crime than those who didn't see the gun. If a crime is witnessed where a weapon is involved, people will most likely not remember as many details of the crime due to the stress caused by the presence of a weapon. However, there is a way to try to combat eyewitness misidentification. A double-blind sequential photo array is an extremely progressive technique, meaning neither the person showing the lineup nor the witness knows which picture is the real suspect. So, the police have no effect on who the witness identifies. In the case of Ronald Cotton, it is believed that the police played a part in who the victim identified as a suspect. She identified Ronald as a suspect in the photo lineup, and he was the only person from the photo lineup that was in the police lineup. After the victim identified him as the suspect for a second time, the police confirmed with her that she had chosen the same person twice, reinforcing her confidence and sending an innocent man to jail. Thanks for watching. My name is Danielle Romberger. I hope you learned a lot. Bye!